My name is Edward Podolsky, and my story is It's Never Too Late. Every summer since I could remember, my parents would take me, my brothers, and sisters to the Mount Rainier National Park. It's just a short drive from the Seattle area. It always turned into what felt like a family reunion with aunts, uncles, and cousins making the trek with us. We were always excited for the week-long camping adventure filled with fishing, hiking, swimming, and campfires. I was nine years old that summer. Late on our third night of camping, all of us kids were by the fire making s'mores and telling scary stories. The adults had been drinking all day. They usually did on these trips. As the night went on, one by one of the adults slowly started to retreat to their tents, as did my cousins. As my parents were turning in, I opted to stay out under the stars with my Uncle Jim. He said he would stay with me and watch over the fire. Making small talk about how my summer has been and my school year ended, my uncle asked if I wanted to go explore around the campgrounds. I was nine, adventurous, and all for going exploring. As we made our way through the camps and towards the trailheads, we stopped abruptly, shortly after going into the trees of the forest. My uncle said he had to piss. Right there, facing me, he pulled it out. As I looked away and waited, his cold hand grabbed mine and he told me to hold his cock. I clearly heard what he had said, but it had not registered in my head. In a crackly voice, I uttered, what? And pulled my hand away. He reached again for my hand and placed it where he had ordered me to place it moments ago. He ordered me to play with him like I did myself when I was alone. Scared and confused, I tried to pull away, but again, his grip on my hand was too tight. My heart was racing and I could feel my body trembling. I tried to pull away again, and I was able to finally slip away. I was immediately grabbed by the back of my neck in order to do the same thing again. I reluctantly continued the act until he was satisfied. Just standing there, afraid to move, my mind was racing. I knew at that moment that what he had done to me was not right. As he was zipping his pants back up, my uncle whispered, this is going to be our secret. Don't tell anyone, you'll get us into trouble. The whiskey and cigarette smell on his breath made me feel nauseous. The walk back to the campsite was silent. I crawled into my tent and into the sleeping bag where I began to shake. I put my head under the covers and I cried myself to sleep. The next few days in the forest felt like years. I would stay by my mother's side day and night until we finally retreated back to our normal lives at home. At home, my father couldn't handle his liquor and would disappear for days at a time on a drinking binge. My mother would either be off chasing him before he could spend the rent money, or she would be out collecting her for argent credit cards that were coming in the mail. My siblings and I were left to fend for ourselves most of the time. I would lash out at every chance I got. Yelling and screaming over the requests was a normal occurrence, so was skipping classes at school. Pretty soon, the phrase, I love you, turned into I hate you, which usually resulted in getting my ass beat. The abuse from my uncle was recreated in different environments and at different times into my early teen years. Each time, I was reminded that this is our secret and I could get us into trouble if I ever told anyone. As I grew into my teens, I was able to escape away from my uncle's abuse by not attending his family functions. Slowly distancing myself from my family, I began to resent the parents for not protecting me. Late into my teen years, as I matured, I began to question my sexuality. From an early age, I knew I was different from the other boys, but I didn't know what it was. It was not until my senior year that I accepted the fact that I was gay. I knew that it had nothing to do with my uncle's abuse, but I began to blame myself for his actions. If I was gay, I reasoned somehow I must have asked for it. Keeping all this bottled inside me and buried away, I left home on my 18th birthday. I moved to Orange County, California, and pretty much became disconnected from my family and my previous life in Washington State. I was finally free and able to start a new life. I met my first boyfriend, Kyle, who just happened to be a well-built police officer, and pretty soon we were living together, making a life and a family of our own. As, after a few years in California, my cousins and siblings began to have kids of their own. As their childbirths and toddler birthdays were blasted on social media, my uncle was tagged in pictures of him attending such events. These images began to stir emotions of what had happened. I would stare at such posts and wonder how he could live with himself. I began to question my silence when my sister posted family pictures from a camping trip they took. Tagging my uncle in the pictures with my nieces and nephews, they were playing, swimming, and hiking. 
all in the same setting where my childhood was altered forever. If he had done this to me, he could very easily be doing this something to one of those kids. That night, when Kyle returned home from his patrol shift, I sat him down, and for the first time in my life, I told another human being what had happened to me at the hands of my uncle. I let him know that I had never told anyone because I was ashamed. I recounted how traumatized I was when the abuse first happened. Tears running down my face, Kyle took me in his arms. Holding me tight, he told me I had nothing to be ashamed about, that I was not the one to blame for the abuse happening. After a few minutes of sobbing, Kyle asked why I finally decided to tell him about what happened. I let him know about the recent trip that I saw on Facebook, how it triggered all the pain to come out, and how I was afraid or it could happen to another child. I had finally opened up to someone, but I knew that was not enough. I had to let my family know what had happened. Since moving to California, I had not seen my family and had very little contact with them. My mother was incarcerated for credit card fraud, and my father is now in recovering for his drinking problem. They had accepted me being gay, but I resented them for not noticing that I was being molested by my uncle. I did not know how my family would react to what I was going to say, however they reacted. All I knew was there was no turning back. I was not opening up for sympathy. I was opening up because I knew it was time to stop being silent. I was going to have to tell my mother over the phone since she usually called once a week from prison. With her on the line, I told her that I had to tell her something, but I would like to get my dad on the line. So I made a three-way call. I was so nervous. Then, all of a sudden, I blurted out, Uncle Jim molested me when I was younger. The phone went silent, except for the prisoners yelling in the background. My father's voice sounded shaky. What the fuck do you mean he molested you? Before I could answer, my mom shouted through the phone, I'm going to kill that bastard. I let both of them know that I was not telling them because I wanted to get even with him or ruin his life. I was telling them because I had to make sure no other child was harmed. Through our conversation that night, we agreed that it was best to contact my siblings and cousins to let them know what had happened to me. My siblings immediately let me know that they were sorry that I had to go through such abuse and felt sorry that I kept it all inside me for so many years. They then proceeded to ask their kids if anything happened to them. Thankfully, none of them had been abused by my uncle. Most of my cousins believed me and were thankful that I did speak up about what had happened. The ones who did not, well, I can't waste my time trying to convince them. At least the seed is planted in their heads and they will always be cautious of my uncle. My aunt, who was married to my uncle, couldn't bring herself to believe it happened. The only contact we had was shortly after I told my family. It was her telling me over the phone that I'm a liar and I ruined her marriage. I immediately ended the call with, believe what you want. I knew it was not my purpose to try to convince her. As for my uncle, his call came a few days after hers. Answering the call and hearing his voice for the first time since I was a teen, all the memories came rushing back. He started the call by stating I was a lying faggot. As he continued on his rant, my mind zoned out. I recounted every time he violated me, how he stripped away my adolescence, how he altered my life. I abruptly cut him off and stated, I will never be silent because I am not ashamed, and hung up the phone. Edward Podolsky.